The ESP32 microcontroller contains multiple pins that can drive different sensors and devices. However, many Internet of Things projects may require more pins, and the ESP32 only has a fixed number of GPIO pins. As you can see here, I have a 16-channel relay where I am driving several high-voltage AC devices in my home automation system. In one of my projects, I ran out of GPIO pins as I am controlling several other sensors connected to my ESP32. Fortunately, the PCF8575 IO Expander module allows you to add or expand the number of GPIO pins that you can control. It has 16 channel of bidirectional GPIO ports which you can use as either input and output. You can use this to drive your LED light display or if you need to read the button switches. You only need two I2C pins and you can attach multiple PCF8575 on the same serial I2C bus to drive multiple sensors. If you want to learn more, then let's start exploring. Donsky Tech. In this video, I am going to be explaining how you can interface your ESP32 microcontroller with the PCF8575 IO port expander. So what is a port expander and why do we need to learn about it? Basically, your ESP32 contains several GPIO pins that you can use in your Internet of Things project. However, if your Internet of Things project needs to control several sensor devices, then chances are you will run out of GPIO pins to use. For example, if you're doing a home automation project and you need to control several high-powered devices, then you need to control a relay, and for each relay input pins, you need to connect it with your ESP32. The problem is if you are already connecting or, or you have already connected several input or output sensor in your ESP32 and you cannot connect this relay directly to your ESP32. So that's why you need to have a port expander so that you can expand the number of GPIO pins that you can control using your ESP32. So what is basically this PCF8575? The PCF8575 module is an IC or it comes in a module form wherein there is already some pull-up resistors and some protection circuit devices that you can use. I highly suggest that you use the module type so that there's no problem for you or there's no need for you to attach several uh, external pull-up resistors. This PCF8575 is an I2C parallel port expander. What it means is that by connecting the squared C pins SDA and SEL to your ESP32, then you can have 16 output or 16 additional GPIO port here. So this is the port which is the P00, P07 and from P10 up to the P17. If you take a look at the back of this particular module, you would notice that there is a setup for the A0, A1, or A2, which uh, you will need so that you can set the I2C address of your CF8575. Make sure that the middle pad is connected in either the ground or in the BDD because this will tell the PCF8575 which I2C address it is. I encountered specifically this problem when using this PCF8575 and I did not solder the pads in here and what happens is that my PCF8575 has a different I2C address that it returns to me whenever I run the Arduino I2C scanner. So make sure that the middle pad is soldered properly so that you would uh, not encounter the issue that I have encountered. This PCF8575 is compatible also with most microcontrollers and the standby current consumption is very minimal, which is the 10 microampere ampere max. So, what is this I2C and how can it help me? The reason that I2C is really a good uh, protocol is that by just using these two uh, I2C bus, which is the SDA and SEL, then we can connect multiple PCF8575. For example, First, PCF8575 may be directly connected with the SDA and SEL pins. And 
In parallel, we can have the PCF8575 connected also to the same serial bus. The only thing that you need to remember is that each of your PCF8575 should have a unique I2C address by soldering the back side of this module. So how do you communicate or wire your PCF8575 with your ESP32? It's actually simple. As I have mentioned, you only need to connect the SDA and the SEL pin to your SD, SDA and SEL pin of your ESP32 and supply the needed power. I'm using 5 volts in here so that you can connect it with the BCC and the ground. And after these things are connected, then the only thing that you need to do is just connect the output port, which is, for example, this one, the P00. I connected it in a switch. And then the other end of the switch is connected to ground for a pull-down resistor. And this, uh, the power pin is connected to the 5 volts of the ESP32. In order to con control the LED, then you just need to, to connect one of the pins, which is the P01 in the anode part and add a current limiting resistor at the other end. So basically, that's how easy it is to wire the PCF8575. In, in the project demo later, you would see how this project works. The other thing that is really easy to use about the ESP32 is when you need to control several high-powered AC devices using a relay. As you can see in here, it follows the same wiring or is schematic and the only difference is that the P0 pin and the P7 up to the P17, you just need to connect everything in here to the pins in here of your 16-channel relay. So for example, the pin 1, P00, is connected to pin 1 of my 16-channel relay. And the one thing that you need to make sure is that you have an external power supply that can power for the relay of relay coil of your 16-channel relay. Because the ESP32 cannot power directly the channel here, so you might encounter some power shortage issue. So the best thing that I can tell you is just use the external power supply to power the relay. And the next question is, how are we going to drive the PCF8575? Uh, so far, I have been using this library from uh, Ransom Mishanti. It's called the X-Ray PCF8575. Uh, using this library is really easy as you just need to set the values at their high or low. So let's go now on how you can use this library. So this is the project that I am using. So the only thing that you need to do is to add this particular library in your platform that I am NIPI in my platform IO. So this is the library and the version is 1.1.0. As you have added the library, then all you need to do is just import it, then set the I2C address. After setting it up, and all you need to do is, is to call the pin mode, which is the P0 and pin 1. As you can see, it's actually easy. It's similar to how we set it up in a normal Arduino program. And you begin the transaction by communication by using this dot begin. Once the dot begin is created, then you can see in here, this is my switch project. So in the switch project, we just need to create a digital read. So in the digital read, all you need to do is to read the status or the value in the P0. Since the value is too low or is in pull down, you, I'm using a pull down resistor. So if it's low, then we just turn off the LED and if it's high, then it would turn on the LED. So, in here, uh, you can even use the PCF8575 IO expander to read the values of the switch here. So, I have here a button switch and you can expand this project to use the keypad. If you have a keypad matrix of button switches, then you can use the PCF8575 for that purpose also. As you can see, if I just click this one, the button, then you would notice that the LED is turned on. And if I remove my hand, then it will turn off. So let's try again. The other thing is regarding the blink LED. And it's really simple. It's just the same pattern. 
So this is the blink LED pattern. You just need to set the output. Once the output is set, then you would notice that by running this loop function, then you would turn on or turn off the LED. So I have here my ESP32 and my PCF8575 IO expander, including the LED and a button switch. And as you can see, the LED is being driven by the uh, PCF8575 IO expander. Now, we can go into something much more interesting about how you can control a 16-channel relay. So, this is the code on how you can control the 16-channel relay. And the only thing that you need to do in here is that you just need to follow this wiring and the schematic diagram. Once you have followed the wiring and the schematic diagram, it's almost similar to what we did earlier when we blinked the LED. So, we just need to import the PCF8575 and the I2C address. And we need to set also, these are two variables. If you wanted to control all of the relays in your 16 channel, I set it into 0 or 16. Once everything is okay, all you need to do is just set it to output. So, I have a for loop here that will loop from 0 to 16. And then, set the, the pin mode into output. Once it is in output mode, then you need to begin. And I'll just turn off everything in here also since my relay is actually low. So it, to turn it off, you need to set it to high. So same uh, function also in the loop function, as you can see in here, we, you, we can turn on the relay by setting and low. So right now, if we set digital right low, and we can turn on the relay. And then I have added several delays in here. And if you want to turn off, Relays again, then all you have to do is to set the value into it. So, basically, that is how easy it is to control your AC devices, no matter how many numbers or how many AC devices you need to control, by just using the same PCF8575 library. In this video, I'm going to show you how we can control our 16 channel relay with the ESP32 and the uh, PCF8575 port expander. So I have here my 16 channel relay. So there is eight here and there are also eight relays in here. It contains also the LED for each channel so that you would see if the relay is triggered. And it contains also the optocoupler. These are the optocoupler, one for each side so that the input from the ESP32 would be isolated from the output that we are controlling. It contains also the array here, Darlington Array Transistor. So this IC controls each of the individual relay, relay and it has also an LM2596 uh, regulator so that the voltage would be properly handled. And as far as the input is concerned, you have here the DC plus and the DC minus. This is where we're going to supply the power, external power for our relay. And then you have here the 16 channel input. So that's numbered from 1 to up to 16. And then there is a ground pin also. This is the ground pin and the positive 5 volts. So... In our case in here, we're going to control the whole circ this 16 channel with the ESP32. So we're only going to use two pins from the ESP32 to control the 16 channels. So let's go to the connection. So I have here the ESP32 and the PCF8575 uh, GPIO port expander. So it has 16 channels also which is actually appropriate for our 16 channel relay so what we're going to do is just wire up the i squared c uh, to the i squared c sel sda pin of our gpio port expander and connect it also into the bcc and the ground module which i'm using right now is the 3.3 volts so this is the 3.3 volts and the ground is right here I have prepared also the connecting wires for the GPIO port connection. So I have here the P0 
up to P7 and then the P10 and up to the P17. So all of this will be connected into our relay module and usually the connection is really simple. For now, what I'm doing is just to connect the ground pin here with the ground and then this is my bench power supply so I have here the positive and I have also the negative here so what we're going to do is just wire up the positive into the DC plus and the negative into the DC minus and for each pin that we have in here in the GPIO we're just going to match it into the pin of our GPIO port expander so the P0 would be placed in here in the pin 1 and then the the next pin would be placed here and so on and so forth And that's it. The code for this project, including the detailed write-up, is available in the description of this video. So you can go into the description so that you would you can learn more. That's it. Happy exploring!